$123,000 for a Grand Wagoneer. And this is one reason why I think Carlos Travaris, the CEO of Stellantis, needs to be removed immediately. He's really destroying this company, and it's really unfortunate because he's pushing EVs. He's pushing luxury vehicles, even though the market of Jeep is not luxury. You can look at the sales are down, and he actually got an increase in his salary. It's kind of crazy to get a $39 million is what he made this year. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty good year for Carlos. But prices are up. Sales are down, and they're focusing on the wrong market. Here, 75 grand, and this is just a Grand Cherokee. Can you guys see that? Pretty crazy. Just a Grand Cherokee, you're looking at 75 grand, and they're getting rid of V8s. They don't want to have any more V8s. They're pushing EVs. It's not what people want, and lot rod is becoming a huge issue. And you have really probably the, uh, I would say, the worst product available in the market when it comes to Fiat, you know, you have some really bad products. The Hornet, slowest selling vehicle in the United States in 2024. So they don't have a lot going for them. And then you have this CEO who only has one thing in mind, and that's cost cutting, cost cutting, cost cutting. That's about all he can do and then increase his salary. Uh, and then you have dealers over here struggling with lot rot because these $70,000 Grand Cherokees and $125,000 Grand Wagoneers are not selling. And these non-V8, non-Hemi trucks are not selling. And people do not want them. And you have Chrysler barely even holding on as a brand anymore. The grandson of Chrysler wants to buy it, but that's not going to go anywhere. All you have is one vehicle they offer now. And uh, yeah, I don't think that'll be around much longer. So it's just all around from the Jeep to the Charger to the trucks. They're all going in a way that people don't want them to go. The truck's getting rid of the V8. Jeep's getting super expensive and also getting rid of the three, which 392 was kind of a cool Jeep, you know, but most people wouldn't spend that much money on one. But still, they got rid of the affordable Jeep. You can't even get them now because of all the safety features and everything. Where, you know, a $35,000 Jeep doesn't exist anymore, even though they say it might on their website. Try to find me one and let me know where because I can't find one. So at the end of the day, it's a big issue for every everything they make jeep ram everything they're all having issues ram stupidest thing they've ever done is get rid of the hemi you have other brands like chevy continuing to invest in their v8 so it doesn't make any sense yeah the 2500 and stuff will probably you know they're still going to have their diesel option and stuff but at the end of the day also the prices i mean let's look at this one i think i yeah this is the one i looked at the other day uh, one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars uh, yeah, it might be cool with some, some wheels, but I can tell you it ain't worth no $132,000. I love the comments. People always say, I bought my first home for eighty two dollars for $110,000, and it's literally $130,000, $120,000, $120,000, $118,000 dollars or something, hundred and twelve, dollars something like that. So these prices are insane, and the clientele base for Jeep is not that. Anytime I see a Jeep commercial, it's always... Come here, we can get you done. If you're upside down, come over here. Yeah, 118,000. It's not the clientele. I don't know what they're thinking. And by far, they have the biggest issues getting people approved. They have all those issues. Let's look at this Durango here. Let's see how much. I saw one yesterday, it was almost 100. That's crazy. So 45,000. Uh, so still, but at least you get that somewhat reliable 3.6 liter V6. Uh, but still, 45,000. That's a lot of money for this kind of SUV. I mean, that's more than I spent for my new 4Runner. And what's going to hold their value better? A 4Runner or a Dodge Durango with the V6? Probably a 4Runner, in my opinion. And it's funny because in, at this dealership, I'm seeing so many of these tags that are, you see the tag that came back? This person even had a tag. It's hilarious. There was another paper tag down there. So this is just proof that it's hard to get people approved. It's a fact. People have to bring in paperwork in the future or the bank. We let the customer have the car and the bank will actually say, hey, we're going to call the customer's work. We got to verify this stuff. So maybe a month down the line, the bank say, hey, we can't verify it. And the loan's not good. They need to bring the car back. And that's, a, I mean, that's literally what's happening. There's one, two right there. There's another one over there. So they're having issues getting people approved and the deals probably are not sticking as much as they were during the pandemic times. Banks were handing money out to anybody that could breathe. 
Uh, but yeah, so yeah, 63,000. At least it's a Rubicon, but still, man, that's, that's too much money. It really is. And the CEO is on a, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't think he really cares. I think it's more, he's already made good money. He has money. He made 40 million this year alone. At the end of the day, he's trying to be the next Elon Musk. And I understand electric cars can be around, but it's not the only way. And it's not the way for Dodge's near future, Ram's near future. Any American company like this, except Tesla, Tesla is the EV company at the end of the day for a while, guys. And I mean, what is it, 10% of sales are EVs? And Dodge is wanting to sell all these EVs in a short period of time. It's just too soon. Other manufacturers are still continuing to invest in their V8, but not Stellantis. Stellantis cut it. I think Chevy, literally, and General Motors, I think they're almost a almost billion dollars. Now, as they make the V8 more efficient, honestly, reliability tends to go down. But I still would say it's better than any of these turbo six cylinders. Uh, and I know it's an inline six, which is better than others, but still, at the end of the day, it's still a turbo, it's still a six cylinder, and it's not a diesel. Six cylinder turbo gas, any turbo gas tends to have issues with burning oil in the long run. Um, they just have a lot more issues than let's say a turbo diesel. So I don't know how longevity is gonna go. I'm just trying to save this company, and I know Carlos Chavares is not good for this company. It's not what we used to be, and hey, I mean, we need an American CEO to take it over and know what we want, so hey, Leave your comment. Let me know what you think. Stay blessed and have a great day.